Welcome back. Now, on the 3rd of May each year, the fundamental principles of press freedom is celebrated to evaluate press freedom around the world and also to defend the media from attacks on their independence. Namibia will be hosting this year's World Press Freedom Day. The day was proclaimed by the UN's General Assembly in 1993 following a recommendation adopted at the 26th session of UNESCO's General Conference in 1991. This in turn was a response to a call by African journalists who in 1991 produced the landmark Vintug Declaration. Now, Yehu Stefan, who is, uh, or Stefan Yehu, rather, who is the Chief Executive Officer at One Africa Television, now joins us this morning on the role that One Africa plays to ensure press freedom. Good morning and welcome. Thank you, Nina. Lovely to have our competition yeah. on, on set with us. <laughs> when last did you wake up this early? No, I do every day. Every day? Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So yeah. we didn't catch you off guard there. No, not too much. <laughs> now, now, as I mentioned in my intro, Stefan, you know, on the 3rd of May each year, uh, you know, we commemorate World Press Freedom Day. Um, and, and it's a day to remind everybody of the fundamentals, uh, you know, considering and the principles consider around press freedom. Um, what, you know, is One Africa doing to play its part in ensuring that, uh, you know, they exercise press freedom? Mm. So Nina, press freedom is one of the fundamentals of any democracy. It's a very important pillar of any well-functioning society. So yes, we celebrate it on a certain day. It's something that I think we need to live every day. And we look at and when we look at media freedom, it is it is a very delicate balance of interaction between as journalists and uh, as media houses. Are we doing our jobs to to do it right? Mm -hmm. um, it is the support that we get from advertisers and people that fund the media, the media industry. Um, and uh, then, of course, there is the government and, and the people that are in power. Do they give us the freedom and allow media to have the voice that it should have? Mm -hmm. So for me at One Africa, it's important that it's something that we should live every, every day and, at, as, and include it in our values that we have at Tribe 5 Studios and One Africa. It's two things. Uh, the one is we have to ask ourselves all the time, does it create hope? Mm -hmm. And the stories that we tell um, and the conversations that we put out there should have positive impact. Um, I think the world has had a lot of uh, mistrust and a lot of negativity. And as, as journalists, we should use that freedom to make sure that we are constructive in society mm -hmm. and, and in people's minds. Mm -hmm. The other one is, is it fair? And I think that's an important one that ties in with the code of con conduct mm -hmm. we subscribe to as, as media entities to always say, well, when we reporting on someone, did we give them a right to answer us back? Are we quoting them correctly? Um, and that we don't cut off pieces of these sentences and just go for whatever will give us the most clicks. Uh, but we really are fair towards the people that we are reporting on. And through that being fair to audiences, because we're giving them information that they can trust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And what role will you be playing as uh, you know, World Press Freedom Day approaches and Namibia hosting? So I think as media, the, the most important one for all of us is to talk about it mm -hmm. and to say, let us remember, this is why it is important. Let us appreciate the freedom that we've, we've had in Namibia um, and let us do everything in our power to, to make sure that we maintain that. So um, as Drive Fire Studios, which is uh, the holding company for One Africa and 99FM, we are actively involved with the Editors Forum of Namibia that is uh, one of the main bodies that, that is working on the celebrations for World, World Press Freedom Day. So we obviously make our contribution as part of that also. Mm -hmm. Now, I mentioned uh, earlier that the Vintage Declaration, uh, you know, is for the development of free, independent, uh, pluralistic uh, press. And, and this declaration was taken 30 years ago. Now, mm -hmm. looking, uh, you know, back since then, would you say that in general, uh, we've committed to this uh, freedom of press? I think in Namibia we've been we've been blessed. Um, I mean, yeah, we complain about things now and again, but generally, I mean, in the majority of time, we have a lot of, of freedom um, of the media, and it's something that we should really value and protect uh, for all the stakeholders that, that are part of it. Um, this morning, I looked at the 2021 World Press Freedom Index for mm. Africa. And you look at the map of all the countries, and it is quite scary to see that there are only 
four, five countries in Africa where they rate the position as satisfactory, and that is uh, South Africa, Botswana, Ghana, Burkina Faso, I think, and then in Namibia. And if you look at the rest of Africa, it's either orange or red, where, where the situation around press freedom is not um, is not satisfactory. Mm -hmm. So I think worldwide there is a lot of work to do. Yeah. And unfortunately, I mean, one of the, the, the things that is one of the biggest threats to, to media freedom is the financial situation that media is in, the disruption that comes from the big social media platforms that are taking a lot of revenue away from traditional media right. that is paying for journalism. Um, and that financial threat is a problem. Um, if people start buying out media ent entities with the main aim to, to make profits from it, or like you've seen in a mm -hmm. lot of places, just strip out the assets, uh, sell it off, um, or hold it for only for political power, um, media gets into trouble. Yeah. Um, because you need financial independence and people that have a frame of mind that really support yeah. media freedom. Yeah to be heading up institutions for it to work effectively. Uh, this year's World Press Freedom Day is being commemorated under the theme Information as a Public Good. Mm -hmm. uh, just unpack that for us uh, real quick. So I think when in the, we are in the information era and we'd, we've had an explosion of access to information and, and data that we can read on social media platforms and I mean we all know what, is, what has happened in the world, um, how mistrust has increased, how fake news um, mm. has increased. And if you look at the campaign uh, to, that was run against Facebook and some other platforms to say stop hate for profit, um, when we say this information should be for the public good, it really speaks to, for me, the, the duty that we have as media and as journalists to say we have a job in society to be the storytellers for our community and that job involves that we must get three sides of the story or four sides of the story, put things into context, uh, be fair and tell the story so that it builds trust, yeah. so that based on that information our communities can, can take the right decisions. There's been a lot of damage in our societies and in our relationships mm -hmm. between different groups, whether it's male, female, whether it's race, uh, whether it's different countries because of this one-sided voice that is published on, on social media platforms. Yeah, no, indeed. Uh, as uh, Tribe Fire Studios, as a media entity, do you have any you know, activities lined up uh, to commemorate this day? So we've done quite a bit in, in terms of in our, in our lineup of, of programming to give opportunity to, to talk about this. Um, so definitely it's affecting what we're doing in terms of content. Um, and then, yeah, we're taking part with the, with the national uh, things that are happening. And yes, I'm here today, as you say, at our competition. <laughs> yes. I don't think we really we are a competition, <laughs> but it is I mean, we op operate in the same industry. And I think the, the relationships between people in the media space mm. and, and people that lead the media industry, um, it's on all of our shoulders to make sure that we also stand back from our own businesses and we build something which is constructive and good and very necessary for the country. Yeah. Well, Stefan, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely speaking to you and thank you for your time. Thank you, Nina. That was uh, Mr. Stefan Hirchel, who is the Chief Executive Officer at One Africa Television, speaking to us uh, on World Press Freedom Day as it approaches on the 3rd of May. We'll be right back. <laughs>